Hey, let me kick it to you right quick, man. Not on some gangster shit, man, on some real shit. Anybody done been through the same thing, I'm sure you feel the same way. Big feel, it's for you, Pimpin'. It's one one day at a time, man, and and one uh one main factor that I noticed that I wasn't uh exercising was uh boundaries. You understand what I'm saying? Like I already told y'all, I guess I'm gonna have to say it over and over again. And I understand why Bruce Lipton said the same thing for 40 years and Shaharazad Ali been pushing the same message since 1989. And it's like, whenever you have a message, a part of that is repeating it because you have to understand that new people are tuning into what you're talking about every day. So it's just a part of the process. So I probably I already know I'm gonna end up saying the same stuff over and over again. But I un also understand that a part of the reason I'm, I was in that situation is because certain things were said over and over and over again. And so that's why I don't feel bad going live every day as many times as I want to go live saying the same things over and over again to reinforce um, the mentality that I have now. Nah, man, it ain't. I, I, you said it was it was hard to watch, man. I was, bro. I don't, bro. I was in the military for eight years, man. It wasn't a matter of it being hard or difficult. It was a matter of that shit just being stupid. <laughs> I, when I was in the military, we could run eight miles. Let's do it. You want to ruck march twelve miles? Let's do it. Push ups, push ups. It didn't matter because I believe my energy was going towards a worthy, a worthy cause. It, it, I, I, there's no amount of effort I wouldn't put into something I believe in. None. It, it, it doesn't matter. 3 o'clock in the a.m., let's do it. 12 o'clock at night, let's do it. It don't matter. But when the shit start becoming stupid, I can't get my energy to it no more. That's why I left college. I was like, this shit's stupid, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And, and, I, and I've been saying that. I said, when, whenever I don't feel like the organization I'm a part of is is in alignment with my values, I have to leave, irregardless of how that may be received by the people who are a part of that organization. When I wanted to leave college, my family didn't take too, too highly of that, but I had to pick and choose. I'm the one in the classroom. I'm the one typing these papers. So I have to make the decision that's best for me, even though that decision may not be acceptable in the eyes of other people, but it just gets to that point. And like I keep saying, I told y'all, this ain't about to be a, a, a tell all, he did this, he did that. And let me tell y'all about this time. Fuck all of that, because I know some some people are just nosy and they like gossip. But this shit is about understanding the psychological vulnerabilities of human nature 
and how you too, nigga, you can you can look at this shit and say that that would never happen to me, nigga. It might not happen to you on this level, but it could happen to you in a relationship with somebody who is acting one way or saying one thing and, and doing another. So and that's the valuable lesson I learned because I used to be like that, looking on the outside, looking in like, how in the hell somebody could do that, nigga? You done. You could have seen that, nigga. The human mind has psychological vulnerabilities that we ourselves may not be fully aware of. And so I'm, I'm diving deeper into psychology as a way to protect myself from being vulnerable to people who may have a level of understanding into the human psychology that the common person does not have. What what's what's your uh and oh, oh boundaries boundaries like like uh like I like I black black velvet I you could ask your question man but I uh I don't have I don't have time to play with people on some goofy stuff because this is serious I know on on, on from the outside looking in this is just another game it might just be another game for you or another form of entertainment for you but. This real deal, bro. This real this real business, man. I just got through reading uh gaslighting because even though that term was threw out to us, we never investigated. We never investigated it. We never investigated gaslighting. We never really investigated narcissism to see if that was in fact applicable to the circumstances we was in. Now, I don't have to let you up, Black Velvet. I'm going to set a boundary. I'm going to start right here on the internet. And you can think it's rude or mean. I don't give a, I don't, I don't give a shit, man. <laughs> it's a boundary. You can ask your question in the chat like everybody else. I don't owe nobody nothing. I'm done feeling like I owe somebody something. Boundaries, my boy. I recommend everybody do that. I recommend everybody set up boundaries and be okay with those boundaries rubbing people the wrong way. And shout out to everybody that been sending messages or whatnot because I already, I already processed it in my mind that how I was conducting myself and portraying myself on the internet, man, y'all niggas could be like, nigga, fuck you. Y'all could, y'all could easily do that. Y'all could easily say, nigga, fuck you. All that shit you was talking, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. Y'all could easily say that. And what could I say? Nothing. <laughs> what could I say? Nothing. And the fact that y'all doing it lets me know that it's actually g genuine and there's no ulterior motive present because y'all ain't have to message me. None of y'all was forced to message me. Y'all, None of y'all was instructed to message me and tell me anything. Y'all was genuinely coming from an honest space, and I need that. Even though I may not know you directly, there's still a level of humanity that connects us all, even though it's happening over the Internet. You said, how do you plan to explain this to Ja when he grows up and sees this online? I'm going to tell him the truth. I'm going to tell him the truth. And during this process of untangling my mind, I will gain insights as to exactly what happened and how I was thinking, along with help from, you know what I'm saying, a therapist that I may not have at this time. So I'm just going to tell him the truth. From, from my perspective, in addition to any perspectives that I gain moving forward? That's a good question, though. That's a good question. And I don't have to dismiss questions because I don't have an answer for it. <laughs> that feels good in itself, being able to tell y'all an honest answer without getting without trying to deflect from answering the question because I don't have an answer or because I know that the answer going to make me look stupid. You don't believe that we are in this world, but not of this world. 
I believe that the world at any time and space will need some type of improvement and certain things that we need to change. And it starts with each person seeing what they need to do to change rather than going on this this uh, notion that it's our job to tell other people what they need to be doing. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get professional therapy because it's necessary. That's another question people like to ask is, am I gonna stick with the knowledge? I stick with science. Don't don't call it the knowledge like like it's a, a absolute containing box of everything you need to know because <laughs> it's not, bro. I'm sticking with science, man. If it makes objective sense, I'll do it. I'll consider it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying as far as my mind being my own therapist. Now I asked myself today, uh, Nature, Nature Boy used to say he's our higher self because he brought us to a higher perspective. So underneath those pretenses, that would mean that everybody that brought you to a higher perspective was your higher self. Like, how are you exempt? Like Bruce Lipton would be your higher self because he brought you to a higher understanding of epigenetics. It, I just got tired of the weaseling out of certain things applying to us, but not to him. Like, wouldn't Shaharzad Ali be your higher self because she brought you to a higher awareness of the psychology of the relationship between black men and women? I'm just saying if the, that, that's one thing I liked about the military is that no matter how high your rank was or what position you had, you were not above the rules. I was underneath the same rules as a private or E1 as a four star general. Just because you're a four star general does not mean you're exempt from the rules. Everybody in the army, everybody in the Navy is underneath. If the curfew is one o'clock. You have to be on base at one o'clock, even if you're the general of the army. <laughs> like it don't it, it, that that was another leadership fault where the leader could exempt himself from his own rules, and that that didn't make any sense. Because if if you being our higher self was contingent upon you bringing us to higher perspectives, that means that Bruce Lipton is your higher self, Shahrazad Ali is your higher self, and the people who wrote the articles that we were referencing are your higher self as well. It didn't make no sense. Like, come on, my boy. And that and that's just causing me to dive deeper into narcissism, sociopathy, gaslighting. Uh, I, I was just introduced to a new concept called dark empathy. So I'm just going into levels that at one time I did not consider going into because they would compromise my understanding of the group I was a part of. What's up, uh, Shahid? So it just it's just the process of I mean that's the name of the that's the name of the live is untangling my mind. Yeah, I mean, I think I think at some point we're all hypocrites. So uh, being a hypocrite is not dangerous. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I told y'all this isn't about uh, bashing anybody as much as it is having an honest psychological evaluation 
about the things that were said and about the things that were done. It, 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 and, and this applies to not just Bishop, but it applies to everybody who's ex who, who exhibits these, these traits and these qualities. Or dark empathy is somebody who has the capacity to recognize how you're feeling, but actually has no intent of doing anything to assist you in that process, but rather dark empathy uses the understanding and feelings of other people for their own personal gain. You know how a guy can come up to you and, you know, act like he understands how you're going, what you're going through uh, just to have sex with you. You know, he could say, yeah, he didn't treat you right and you're so pretty and you're so gifted, whatever it is, he's playing, and I'm not saying Bishop is doing this, I'm saying in general, that people who display dark empathy and, and narcissistic traits use the emotions of other people for self gain. And it is in such a way that you wouldn't be able to distinguish whether or not the person was being genuine or not until you matched up their statements with their behavior. You, you don't really pay attention to what people say, you have to pay attention to what they do and that's where you will see the intent of one's heart and character. So after a while, no matter how uh, loud somebody speaks or how confident somebody speaks, you have to look at their, their actions to determine if the knowledge that they have is actually of any use. Because I, I will continue to say that if I take a seed and I plant it in the ground and that seed doesn't grow and I yell at the seed and I tell the seed that, it's, that the seed is the problem, then myself am exhibiting qualities that say I'm an incompetent farmer. Because every farmer knows that if his crop is not yielding anything, that he needs to readjust his approach to his farming practices rather than blaming the seed itself. And so with over a hundred people having came and left carbonation, I, I think that it's safe to say that it's not the people, but rather the environment itself that's the issue. And when we have a leadership or organization that refuses to look at their tactics and make adjustments to those tactics based upon the responses that they're getting, then we have an organization that's bound for failure. So. And so that's, that's what you're watching. You're watching the untangling of my mind because It's necessary. And this method is necessary. Talking, having somebody to listen to you is very important. And I and I intend to take what y'all are doing for me and create that space for somebody else who may need me because uh, a hug and having somebody to listen to you, that can actually prevent somebody from committing suicide. You'll be surprised that just hearing somebody say or just telling somebody hey i understand that's enough to give people hope to keep going and i plan to offer that to people who find themselves in situations where they feel like off the break i'm gonna be misunderstood so i know what it, and, and i'm gonna be the perfect candidate to say nigga i understand because <laughs> bro i done been in a situation where a part of the reason that prevented me from leaving the situation was because of the notion that I wouldn't be understood. And that's one of the worst feelings that you can experience as a person is to feel like nobody on earth understands you. Appreciate that, Miss Clayton. Some of the some of the questions I, somebody just asked, uh, why do I think it got so dark in Atlanta? I, I don't think it was any excuse for it to get dark in Atlanta because we were supposed to have the capacity to apply the knowledge no matter where we went. So I don't think Atlanta was the determining factor as to why things got dark. 
I think that things may have always been dark, but people turned the blind eye to it because they wanted their idea of what they're doing, what they were doing to be true. And a part of healing is also being able to accept that not everybody's going to understand you. So whatever situation, and this, and, and y'all got to understand, even though y'all may not uh, have experienced the situation like I have directly, we all are connected in the fact that we've all been through something where we felt like people wouldn't understand what we was thinking or what we was doing. How many women in here have been in a relationship with a guy and people was trying to tell you, leave him alone and he's no good and da 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 da, but you kept hanging on to your idea of who you thought he was and who you hoped he would eventually be only to finally come to the realization that damn, this nigga ain't gonna never change. Y'all have been there. So I would say that before, just as humans, before we dismiss somebody's claim and before we dismiss somebody's circumstances, we should try to find a way to connect to it and see, damn, shit, I remember working a job I know I wanted to quit. Anything to connect to the person, I think that's more important than dish dishing out articles that we've read on Google and throwing it in people's faces and saying, you need to do this and you need to do that. How many of us have worked a job, know that we it was killing us? And it took us months or years to finally quit. That's the same principle. It's a principle. So on one hand, on the outside looking in, you like, how the hell are these people doing this? Well, ask yourself, how in the hell have you did something that you knew you should have stopped doing long time ago? How many of you smoked cigarettes for goddamn 15, 20 years? Know your ass should have quit long time ago. How many of y'all fucked around and got fat? Know damn well you should have stopped eating like you was eating years ago. How many friendships? How many of y'all was fucking with somebody because they was your friend for so long, but you kept fucking with them because they was your friend for X amount of years? Know damn well you're supposed to end that relationship. So the principle still stands. How many of y'all goddamn went to the club every weekend knowing damn well you supposed to stop going, but you had built up such a momentum, it was like a train. If you understand a train, once you build up the momentum on a train, it's hard to stop that motherfucker. <laughs> it's hard as shit to stop a train. If it hit the brakes, that bitch just gonna keep sliding. God damn. This bitch be moving, boy. Shit. Damn, this bitch won't stop. I know the goddamn train conductor be, they be like, damn, this bitch still slide. So whenever you invest a momentum into something, even though you may peak that you need to slam on brakes, it's hard to stop that momentum. And some people take six months to stop the momentum. Some people take a year to stop the momentum. Some people take five years to stop the momentum. Nigga, my daddy drank, uh, my nigga, my daddy stopped drinking out of the blue. When he was like 50. Just out of the blue, the nigga just stopped. So, and I, and I told you I'm not here to satisfy anybody. I'm just here to tell the truth and untangle my mind. You understand know what I'm saying? There may be certain things about me you might not like. There might be certain statements you might not like. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm okay with that now. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with people not liking me. I'm okay with, you understand know what I'm saying, uh, telling people no. <laughs> that in itself. Like, I'm, I'm okay with telling people no. Like, I'm okay with, you understand know what I'm saying, doing what I want to do. I'm good at sassy class. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, I ain't never worked no job. No, I ain't, I ain't working no job. I, I don't believe in working no job. And that's not to d demean nobody because them niggas driving them Amazon trucks. Nigga, y'all niggas make it happen. I look at every, like, nigga, the trash man, shit, nigga, you get the trash up out of here, nigga. Like, I ain't into that looking down on people because of their job and shit. I'm just saying, personally, I don't work jobs in a sense of I can't do something 
only for the idea that it's going to pay me money. If I do something, it has to be connected to some type of benefit to people. Like, I, I would work with uh, somebody. Like, I just want to help a motherfucker. I ain't worried about the money, bro. I just want to help somebody. The money going to come. The money going to come. I just want to help motherfuckers genuinely, honestly, help motherfuckers rather than getting on the damn phone talking a bunch of random shit that I ain't living or random shit that I can change at a moment's notice. So that's all I want to do. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I need no LLC. Shit, Martin Luther King ain't had no LLC. Malcolm X ain't had no LLC. I'm just going to do it. Fuck jumping through the hoops, my nigga. I'm going straight to it. I'm not going to see. I don't do that. Sh I don't do that, man. I, I ain't like that, man. I ain't like that, man. I'm going straight to it. I don't need no LLC. I'm going straight to it. I'm going straight to it. I'm not worried. I'm not saying if you got an LLC, man, do you, man. Do you, bro. Everybody's journey look different, my nigga. Nah, I can't condemn you anyway. You can only condemn yourself. Shit, I love my true self too, man. And I ain't never letting this shit go again. Shit, even this, even even doing this right now, if I'm doing this for free, bro. If I don't like you now, it's because I genuinely don't like your ass. So, <laughs> if I don't like you now, nigga, it's because I genuinely don't like you. It ain't got nothing to do with you being a troll or anything you say. I just don't like Black Velvet. She a lame to me. I, I just don't, I genuinely just don't like the motherfucker. <laughs> so it ain't got nothing to do with carbonation and nothing like that, nigga. I just genuinely don't like your ass. <laughs> Shit. I don't know what came to the Tasha K interview. You said, please stay away from Keys. He's an agent. Man, I just ain't already can tell, you know what I'm saying? People might try to. Uh, use me for some type of interview or some type of clout and shit like that. I ain't into that, man. I ain't into that, man. I ain't into that. I ain't about to be doing an interview with any and everybody, man. I did that interview with the T because she kept it classy, respectful, everything. And I don't know if Tasha K was just using us for goddamn content or not, man. It ain't that ain't even my business because that ain't even my business, bro. To be telling, to be uh, concerned with what people doing to me because you doing it, what you do, bro. That, that shit don't, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me, man. You have to live with you, man. What do you want to do with my platform? I just, bro, I'm just on here being me, bro. Like I think that, I think that being me is enough. I really think being me is enough. I don't have no no one year plan, two year plan, five year plan, monetizing none of that, man. Y'all gotta understand, man. We we you could die today, bro. You could literally die today. You could die today, man. Just make sure you take advantage of every day you get, bro. And y'all have y'all opinions about people, man. I understand why y'all doing it. Y'all probably just looking out, man. Because I had to learn the hard way that there's some fucked up people out here that will try to make you think you fucked up for recognizing they fucked up shit. So it is what it is, man. Yeah, I, fe I felt that uh, sex ed for dummies. She let us talk for six hours, man. She ain't have to do that shit, and she ain't getting out of dime from that shit, man, because her page ain't even monetized. I ain't no longer limiting myself to what I can and can't say. What's up, Nigel? Yeah, it definitely was therapy. That was a good interview, man. 
I've been live about shit. How long I've been live about 30 minutes? Am I going to do another interview with the T? I don't know, man. I'm just listen, y'all. I'm absorbed in today. I'm making the most of today, man. I'm enjoying y'all today. I don't nigga, I might be dead tomorrow. Y'all gotta understand, man. Get consumed with what you got right in front of you, bruh. Cause it's like nigga, the sun being out, nigga, it's, it's the beginning of November. I'm out this bitch with shorts and short sleeves on, nigga. I'm straight. Birds chirping, my nigga. Like, yo, bro, after going through some shit like that, my nigga, it be the simplest shit that make you happy, bro. You said you think I should only do tea interviews? I can see that uh, pretty brown skin because niggas be messy, bro. Niggas be wanting... The tea didn't even have no questions, bro. She just want... She legitimately wanted to create a space like a free... That shit felt like a free psychologist visit. <laughs> That's what that shit was like. It was like a free visit to the psychologist. But I ain't about to be on nobody's page and they ask me these goofy ass questions. So, uh, did Bombardier really, bitch, fuck you. What the fuck you think this shit is, man? You up here goddamn, man, fuck you, man. Did, 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 did your booty hole really get tickled? Like, <laughs> what kind of shit? What kind of shit? What kind of shit is that, man? Come on, bruh. God, dog. <laughs> yeah. Niggas just crazy on the internet, man. This nigga crazy, bro. Come on, man. Insensitive. Y'all so insensitive. <laughs> Y'all insensitive as shit, man. Damn, bro. I can't heal in this bitch. All right, y'all. Y'all be easy, man. I got boundaries now. As soon as I see an interview, as soon as I see, uh, feel like an interview is 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 not about actually, you know what I'm saying, uh, a real psychological evaluation, but rather like a, a, a spill the beans interview, I'm gone. Yeah, they think that this is an opportunity. So, was he really a good barber? Like, was he really cutting y'all hair? <laughs> Did, did did lawyer really have likes? Like, nigga, you still on that, bro? God damn, my nigga. I ain't nobody talking about that, man. Was y'all really eating beans and rice every day? Like, man, come on, man. No, bro, I'm not, I'm not about to let myself get out here and get dragged through the mud again. I'm straight, man. And niggas ain't about to use me as no guy. I mean, they probably recording the damn Instagram lives and putting them on, on YouTube. But shit, I can't stop that anyway. But what I can stop is is offering myself up for something that I don't agree with. I can just be like, nah. What's up, babe? I see you in here. Yeah, that's what we were saying too, Nika. We was like, the tea interview was enough, boy. That was six hours and it was... It was so refreshing to just talk about, you know what I'm saying, how we actually felt without being behind the guise of a character. Man, I know I heard a lot of folk, man, uh, uh, for no reason. I told y'all, I told y'all what that shit was based in, nigga. I hated my own self, so I made y'all a target for that, ex for, for, I made y'all an outlet for that self-hatred, nigga. That's what that was. I'm telling you, bro, I feel like everybody considered me and Kendra to have some uh, uh, a reasonable degree of intelligence. And I think that us leaving has really caused people who may have continued to believe after everybody else, else left that, hmm, Maybe I need to reevaluate this because if you notice the difference between our interview and our approach from other people is that it wasn't a, let me tell y'all what I think about Nature Boy rant. It wasn't a, he did this to me and this one time he did this. It was largely centered around us understanding what happened from a psychological understanding it was not 
a rampage of outbursts and you know revenge or anything like that we legitimately are trying to gain an understanding of the entire process what was going through our mind before we left what was going through our mind while we was there what was going through our mind when we finally decided to really examine what was going on and so it's an untangling process and this is a part of the process i appreciate y'all accompanying accompanying me during this process because uh we we need other people just like we need any other form of sustenance in our life yeah i definitely agree with that i think that uh him going to jail was a large a large contributing factor to us being able to have the space to think for ourselves again and that was one of the things that i i seen as far as it pertained to gaslighting is that after you've been exposed to gaslighting basically gaslighting uh, is more in depth than this but just a general understanding of what i've got so far is that gaslighting is when a person causes you to doubt your own reasoning ability and creates this false reality that you that you then begin to battle against and a part of healing from being in a gaslighting situation is trusting your own logic and reasoning ability again That's the main thing, is trusting your logic and reasoning ability again. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good point, uh, sex ed for dummies. Uh, that is a part of it, constantly having to push your reason to the back of your mind in order to exist there. That's a part of, that's, that's a part of existing there, is pushing your own reason to the back and accepting the reason of someone else. Yeah, Instagram could be doing an update. It's okay. And it's crazy, y'all. We never investigated Jim Jones. We never investigated Charles Manson. And the similarities is fucking scary than a bitch. Charles Manson's similarities to what we had going on is scary than a bitch, nigga. I didn't know nothing about Charles Manson. I didn't know nothing about them girls, nor did I have any notion to investigate it because I easily dismissed it as, oh, they're trying to be funny. Oh, they're just trolling. But, nigga... That shit sad, bro, because them girls had the same dedication that you see the girls there have now. But if you talk to them women today, they don't feel the same way. <laughs> they don't feel the same way. Once they was able to get away from Charles Manson and really sit with themselves, they came up with a whole nother agenda. I need to really look at it. I need to really look at it, bro. I've only seen small clips. Yeah, I know some. I know someone went to jail. Damn. One of the main women was denied parole 19 times. God damn, no, nah, they ain't letting you out, boy. Boy, they ain't letting you out. Man, I'm set, oh, bro. Watch the full Manson document. Shit, I am, bro. Oh, 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 for y'all. If y'all want to get an understanding, uh, a, a deeper understanding, uh, it's real quick. It's about 25, 30 minutes. It's called Colts. On this, this, it's a series on on Netflix called Explained. And one of the episodes is Colts. Y'all should watch that shit, man. If y'all, if y'all legitimately interested. Just to spread your own awareness, cause shit, nigga, this shit can happen to your kids, nigga. This shit ain't been going, this shit ain't new. This shit been going on for a long time. This shit been going on for centuries, bro. A lot of religions today are actually born out of cults, bro. But y'all should check it out. It's called, it's, it's called Explain on Netflix, and one of the episodes is called Cults. That shit fire. I'll be watching that shit on a regular basis. And that's when I first got a, a glimpse into Father Divine. I never heard of him. I never really uh, researched anything that Jim Jones did. There's other cults I never heard of. Japanese cults, Muslim cults.
That John fire. But anyway, that Charles Manson shit scary. It's a, it's on uh, cause I didn't know he had them women out there like that. I didn't know I didn't know what the hell they was doing. I just the only thing I know hearing about is that Charles Manson was a bad person. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I knew. I never really investigated to see the similarities of what what was going Intermix on. Intermix his beliefs in because he knew that people believed in the Bible and that they would be more susceptible to his beliefs through that avenue. And I see the similarities. We did the same thing. Has he reached out since you left? Yeah, he, re he emailed me, but I ain't read none of that shit. I deleted. I immediately put that shit in the trash. Ain't nothing else to be said. Why would you even want to talk to me? That's weird in itself. The Netflix series is called Explained. It's called Explained. Just type in Explained and then you will see the episode on one of the seasons called Cults. How do you feel about them changing to acting like Muslims now? It, it just further confirms my decision. It just further confirms my decision. That's it. It just further confirms my decision that we never, we don't have anything to stand on. There was nothing to stand on. It was, the teachings can be adjusted according to what we want to do. We want to smoke? Okay, we can make it, we can just pretty much justify that. We want to drink? We could justify that. We can... <laughs> If we could just justify whatever. It didn't sit well with me because I was a part of an actual legitimate organization on multiple levels. I, I started out, I was in FBLA, I was in, I was on a basketball team, I was on a track team, but my, my greatest organization was being in the military and really seeing how things worked and, and why the military was effective. Is it froze? Is it froze? I don't want to be talking and I ain't talking to nobody. Let me know if it froze or not. Oh, I see your shit. I see the hearts and shit come through. But uh like I was saying, uh I was a part of the I was a part of the military and I got a I got a, a, a direct uh understanding of how organizations are supposed to be ran. And like I was saying earlier, one of the things that pretty much just eroded the goddamn integrity of carbonation was our ability to change our values and principles whenever the fuck we felt like it. And also to exempt the leadership from the same accountability as the people. Like, that don't make no sense. That's like that's like the general don't have to follow the rules as 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 a low ranking soldier. That don't make no sense. That don't make no damn sense. And you can't expect people to be like proud to represent something that at any moment what they stand for can be adjusted for no credible reason. I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> I'm good. I can't even get on the camera and speak with any confidence or conviction because I don't even believe in the shit I'm talking about. I'm just saying it because that's what we're saying at the time. And so I don't like feeling like I'm a fucking hypocrite. I don't like that shit. If I'm telling you not to smoke, nigga, it's because, and I'm speaking it with conviction, it's because I'm not smoking. Or if I'm telling you to do this and I'm speaking it with conviction, then it's because I'm, I'm speaking because I'm following what I'm speaking. Yeah, you have to lead by example. That's common leadership things. And, I, and I'm noticed, and I'm just looking at the situation. I'm like, yo, we're lacking regular leadership skills that would apply to a, a, a little league softball team. With what we're doing, we couldn't even manage a recreation basketball team. 
And I'm like, and then when your leadership is incapable of actually understanding what you're saying, but rather they pretend like they do, but never implement any actions that correspond with those changes, then you have to really, then you have to begin to reevaluate the group you were part of. And that's, I wasn't fucking with that shit no more, man. Nigga was really hanging on to a belief that this shit was going to change and get better one day. And I ain't singing no goddamn hymns and shit. We shall overcome one day. I ain't, no, nigga, no. No, nah, nigga, it's been X amount of years, bro. I'm straight, right? Straight, man. And people often say, are you going to keep the knowledge and all that things like and all those things like that? Some of the shit we said was true. The thing the problem was we wasn't up. <laughs> we wasn't living by it. Like like uh, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Shit, I should have applied that shit to motherfucking my searches. I should have applied that to my circumstance. So it's not like I'm up here saying, oh, everything was a lie. No, nigga, I'm still out this bitch with no shoes on. <laughs> I'm still grounded, fool. It just was the hypocrisy of, of exempting our own circumstances from the knowledge we was talking about. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, smoke don't belong in the lawns. Meanwhile, we smoking black and miles. Oh, yeah, yeah, your hair is an antenna. Meanwhile, we doing whatever the fuck we want to do with ours. Come on, man. You shouldn't eat GMO food. Meanwhile, we eating GMO food. Can't get on their camera and speak to y'all about no motherfucking knowledge that I ain't applying. Uh, other, they might be able to do that shit, but, bro, I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried hoping that one, maybe, I'm like, maybe this a phase. And maybe we're going to get back to being on our shit. And it just, no, we just basically just kept adjusting and having bullshit reasons to validate those adjustments. I'm good. I'm good. Straight. I'm straight. And 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 I'm just going to go with what Bruce Lee said. He said, keep what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. Take what you can use. And what don't make sense, leave that shit right there. Yeah, and, and a part of, and listen, man, to, to anybody that feel like they wrong for speaking out and saying the truth, you don't owe nobody to lie, bro. I don't care who the fuck they supposed to be. You don't owe nobody to lie on their behalf. You ain't got to lie for nobody, man. You ain't got to lie for nobody. Yeah. I appreciate y'all being up in here, though. You understand what I'm saying? Because we all need somebody to talk to. And this feedback, this feedback is, is necessary. Yeah, exactly, Devin. Man, they'll eventually get out of it, man. Listen, they'll eventually get out of it, bro. When you study cults, bro, everybody inevitably leaves. Some people's process, you know what I'm saying, immediately some people take time, but eventually reality will set in. It will set in, bro.
Yeah, he got both of us. He got both of us now. He got both of us. Yeah, most of the so-called trolls actually gave a fuck. <laughs> That's all crazy. Told I got the ball on a string Carried the weight of the world But it came with some handles I drag it to the basket Moses with the passage Safely, Lord God, please make an example I tried to break shackles Now they ankles in shambles I can't expect them to be grateful and thankful They thought I had a manual like Hansel Leave your plans in man's hands And it gets manhandled Dancing in the street But I didn't panhandle when I finally drop, make a pamphlet Sell tickets, put that shit on FanDuel Only fans and Fandango Give me your ear like Van Gogh and it's candle wick I mean, I mean it's lit like a candlestick When I'm fatigued like a camo fit A rich man, the size of the needle that the camo fits Walking to Jesus with my sandals wet This world will make you second guess your first mind Remember when it was your first day the first time It couldn't have come at a worse place or worse time and you remember that little voice with that rehearsed line. Just repeat and do your thing, child. Do your thing. Do your thing. That shit hit. <laughs> Just do your thing, child. Oh, gee. Do your, do your thing. thing. Do your thing, At every corner store, bodega, delicatessen. Stands a big head kid learning delicate lessons. Roasted for their clothes or their emotions or their roaches. Bullied by their friends or their mamas or their coaches. Half size, chastised dolls with glasses. Eyes. Talk down, toss down, the world just passed by Grow up to be saviors, surgeons, rabbis The world should have capsized when God got baptized The boat don't sink, the show don't stop The weapons form, the load don't drop The boat gon' rock, the foes gon' plot The roles don't switch, the photo crop The motto is, the more those hate, the more doors prop Open, the prince of heaven was tempted Told that he wasn't who he was and they meant it Never was there a path better cemented So what they gon' say when you at the Olympics Or trying to attempt it Remember it was your first day the first time Couldn't come at a worse place or worse time And you remember that little voice with that rehearsed line Repeating It was saying Time. It couldn't have come at a worse place or worse time. And you remember that little voice with that. 